Welcome to Biology My Passion. I am Soumya Harikrishna. We have been discussing the chapter Control and Coordination. We learned the initial part like how the control is happening in our body or how the impulses are passed, then about reflex action, brain, its structure and their function. Now we are going to learn about control and coordination in plants. We know animals have a proper system for control and coordination that is the nervous system and also the movements are brought about by muscular system. But plants neither have nervous system nor muscular system. Then how can it conduct the impulses or respond to stimuli? There are two types of movements in plants as I mentioned in the introductory part. Growth related movements and growth independent movements. So when we talk about growth independent movement that is in response to certain stimuli from the outside or the environment. It has nothing to do with the growth of the plant. Such movements are mostly directionless or non-directional movements. That means if we are touching the leaf of a touch me not plant, that plant closes or droops or folds its leaves. The touch me not plant is called a mimosa pudicum. So the point where we touch and the point where the leaf is getting close may not be the same. Sometimes if you touch only at a particular point without disturbing any part, that part will close. But otherwise if you just tap one side, the other leaves also will close. That means the impulses are traveling or the information is going from one end to the other. But how can these impulses or uh, information go? That is through electrochemical impulses. The same like you, uh, animals, in plants also, the impulses are traveling as electrochemical impulses. But they don't have a nervous system to carry that. Now, in animals, suppose we want to respond to that. Our muscular system is helping. And also we know it is by changing the shape of the cells for which we have specialized proteins called a contractile proteins present in our muscle cells. Whereas in plants also, it is by changing the shape of the cell only, but the change in shape is brought about by the amount of water in it. We know when the water gets inside a cell, it swells up. That means it's a turgid condition. When the water goes out, the cell shrinks. That is, it is becoming flaxy. So this changes in water content, that is turgidity and a losing of water, eventually helps the plant to move. So in case of tight me not plant, it's a very fast response and also it is not showing any direction. Such movements are called a nasty movements and especially in response to touch it is called a thickmo nasty movement or seismo nasty movement. This is not introduced in your textbook. Okay, but it, just for your information I told. Whereas uh, in sunflower also you can see a growth independent movement where it turns towards the sun. That is rather a slow movement compared to the touch me not plant or even in insectivorous plants we can see this kind of movements. Now we will think about growth dependent movement. Growth dependent movements are actually directional movement. That means it is towards certain stimulus from the environment. It can be either towards the stimulus or away from the stimulus. And also, this is a very, very slow movement. We cannot easily see the growth of a plant. It takes several weeks or months to complete. So, it's very uh, slow process compared to the movement of touch me not plant or sunflower plant where it was growth independent movement. So, these kind of movements are together called a tropic movements. Now, let us learn tropic movement definition. So, when you write, it is not trophic. Trophic is nutrition. This is tropic. Okay. How will you define movements of plants in response to stimulus? St stimulus means trigger from the environment. Either towards or away from it are called a tropic movement. Okay, so tropic movements can be of different types. Phototropic movement, geotropic movement, hydrotropic movement, chemotropic movement. These four are given with the terminologies in the textbook. But you have to learn the definition of all the um, four plus tropic movement. Now I will teach you how to learn these four more from learning only this definition. So first you learn this movements of plants in response to stimulus either towards or away from it is called a, um, what is it called a, uh, the tropic movement, right? Now first we are talking about phototropic movement. Photo means what? Light. So how can we modify this? Movements of plants in response to stimulus of 
light either towards or away from it are called a phototropic movement. So, photo means light. Okay, next is geo. Geo means what? Gravity. So, it is against the gravitational force. So, movements of plants in response to stimulus of gravity either towards or away from it is called a geotropic movement. Okay, now the next is hydrotropic movement. Hydro means actually uh, usually it is towards the water only. The plants never grow away from water. So, we can say that movements of plants in response to stimulus of water either towards or away if you tell also uh, no problem is are called a hydrotropic movement. So, movement of plants in response to stimulus of water either towards or away from it is called a tropic, hydrotropic movement. Then the last is chemotropic. Chemo means what? Chemicals. So, how will you define? Now you can try it. Yes. Movements of plants in response to stimulus of chemicals uh, either towards or away from it is called a what? Chemotropic movement. So, now if the movement is towards the stimulus, suppose I am touching and the movement is towards me, then it is called a positive. So, if I am, you are standing there, I am telling, yes, come here, then you are coming towards me. So, it is a positive response. Whereas, if I am telling, yeah, please come here and you are running away, that is a negative response, right? So, here also we can say this, phototropic movement. So, to show that phototropic movement, we can do a small experiment. You have to take here cardboard box and inside that keep a potted plant okay so uh, keep all the sides covered and there should be only one side which is open and you keep it near a window through which the light should come in except that the room should be dark so that is called a unilateral light means from one side only the light should come it should not be from all around so after some time we can see that the shoot is bending towards the light. It is bending and going towards the light towards the window because that is the only source from where light is coming. So that is kind of going towards the light. So what is it positive or negative? Positive. So positive phototropism. But at the same time roots are growing away from light. They don't want light. So it is negative phototropism. So suppose you might think okay even otherwise the plants grow like that. So to show that what you have to do? Tilt the plant. Horizontally keep it. Then you can see the shoot is bending upwards towards the light, whereas root is growing downwards. So, shoots show positive phototropism, roots show negative phototropism. Okay, now let us look at the geotropism. Now tell me which part will be positive, which is negative. Exactly, roots grow towards the earth, that means towards the gravitational force. So, roots are positively geotropic, shoots are negatively geotropic. Got it. Now coming to hydrotropism, we know obviously water is towards the uh, uh, water. So how will you show that? To that, for that there is an experiment. You have to take a sieve plate. Sieve plate means what? A plate with a, like a mesh like. That means holes are there. In that you put a layer of sawdust or some cotton which can retain moisture. Soak some seeds, distribute them on the sieve plate so that it can start germinating. You can see that initially the, the root is, that is radical part of the embryo will be growing as the root. So it will come down through the sieve, pores on the sieve plate because it is a sieve, right? So it will come down but after coming down it realizes there is no water because water is on the sawdust or the cotton. So what happens? It will bend back and go towards the water source. So that shows positive hydrotropism. Okay. Now the last is chemotropism means towards chemical. When we discuss sexual reproduction flowering plants, we learn pollination happens, then the pollen tube will grow down to the ovule. How can the pollen tube grow down to the ovule? It is because of certain chemicals. So such kind of tropic movement is called a chemotropism. Now think about certain plants which are not having thick stems. They are weak stemmed plants or climbers. They climb around support. Suppose this is a support and my finger is a plant which is trying to climb around. Okay, This is the climbing structure which is called a tendril. Tendril is a coiled thin structure which is used for twining around. So suppose this is the tip of the tendril. What happens is when the tendril touches the contact. Okay, This is the tip of the tendril touching the contact. This part that is the outer part 
grows more than the inner part. So what happens? This will bend towards it, right? Coming like this. Again, this part will grow more. Yes, this part will grow. So always outside is growing than the inside, making it twine around the support. So how is a tendril twining around a support is explained in your textbook. But actually that movement is called a thigmotropic. Thigmo means touch in response to touch. Thigmotropic movement. But that terminology you don't have to study. So how is a climber twining around a support? When the tip of the tendril comes in contact with the support, the part away from the tendril will grow more than the inside part so that it will uh, help it to twine around the support. The same thing is happening during phototropism also. I told shoots are positively phototropic. How can it bend? That also the same way. That is, suppose this is the tip of the shoot. Okay. From this side, that means from my right side, light is falling. Then what happens is, this other side, shaded part, that part will grow little more than the inside. Then what happens since this is more than the inner side, it will bend like this. Okay, again this is growing. The other side is growing. So that will make the plant bend towards the stimulus of light. Actually, this growth is supported by a plant hormone called a auxin. So auxin is a growth hormone. So actually what happens is, when light falls on this surface, from here, all the auxin will go to the opposite side. Right? That will make that part grow more, making the plant bend towards the photo or the light.